Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Dr. De La Oz. I'm here with Dr. Liliana Uribe. Uh, we're here to talk to you about ketamine. Um, first, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of ketamine. Ketamine is an FDA-approved medication that was first formulated in the 1960s. Uh, it was approved in 1970, <laughs> yeah. uh, as we know, and uh, it was first <coughs> developed as an anesthetic. So we've been using it for over 50 years, uh, longer than that, as an anesthetic. Up until today, we use it as, as an anesthetic on a daily basis. But along the way that we started using ketamine, we started seeing the benefits in terms of mental health and mood improvement. Right. Um, and it was in the early 2000s, right, that yes. we started seeing more research and more focus being put on ketamine. Right. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about that aspect of, of, of how ketamine became more mainstream for mental health, for anxiety, depression, PTSD, chronic pain, and uh, also addiction, right? Well, like you said, ketamine's been around for a while, but not only ketamine, psychedelics in general, right? You know, where psychedelics have been known for a very long time to boost mental health, to decrease overall depressive symptoms, anxiety symptoms, PTSD symptoms. And now we're seeing it now in the mainstream. Now it's coming out where people are now more interested, intrigued by it. So here's where we are. Um, what else? Well, ketamine, now that you mentioned psychedelics, mm -hmm. ketamine is a non-traditional psychedelic. Um, it does cause certain hallucinations. Uh, for the most part, patients describe a pleasant experience. Um, that has been my experience as well. Um, I've tried ketamine a few times um, and I've been a patient. Uh, I've also done cognitive behavioral therapy. So I know the benefits that uh, ketamine has, especially for patients that have what we call treatment resistant depression. These are patients that have tried other antidepressants in the past. Um, they've gone through cycles, maybe they've uh, had several antidepressants at a time and they have not seen any response right. or side effects, which are very common. Right, you know, that impacts the sleep, impacts the food, you know, it ends up happening libido, where- Libido, which is a big one if you have- huge. Yeah. That's uh, huge. And also 30 to, we see that 30 to 30 to 40 percent of the patients mm -hmm. that, ha that take antidepressants do not have any response to it. Correct, you know? correct. When what we're seeing with ketamine is between 70 to 80 percent efficacy. Right. Uh, which is huge, right? Now, that being said, ketamine is not for everybody. Uh, and that's the reason we have designed a program mm -hmm. where we both evaluate patients yes. and we decide, you know, in conjunction if the patient is a good candidate for it, okay? So now we're gonna talk a little bit about that process and how, from a patient's perspective, mm -hmm. how they, 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 you know, how they, they go through that process. So first, when a patient comes, we want to see medically if there's any contraindications. The absolute contraindication is uncontrolled high blood pressure, yes. severe heart disease, and brain tumors or something that increases uh, the, the pressure in the brain. Uh, um, this is very rare to, to, to find, you know, in, in people that are, you know, walking around or, or, or living a, a normal life. And that those are the only contraindications. But we want to see the list of medications. We want to see if there's anything else that can impact the therapy. Once the patients are being candidates, then Dr. Liliana meets mm -hmm. with them. And uh, I'm going to let you explain that part. So I then meet with them. Usually it ends up being a whole full hour of a session where I understand history, I understand behaviors. Lifestyle is a big deal with psychedelics. I think mental health has a big deal with how you live your life. You know, how do you eat? How do you exercise? Do you exercise? And how well do you sleep, right? We both believe that if any of those three things are bad in your life or not doing well, I guarantee you your mental health isn't either. Right. right? Those are the pillars of right. healthy living. Exactly. exactly. So ketamine, just like an antidepressant, is an aid to help with the therapeutic process. So what happens with medication is that most most individuals take the medication as a band-aid. I'm gonna take the medication and hope for a miracle that I'm gonna change. What ends up happening? Nothing. They end up developing other symptoms, need other medications to do it. So it then ends up being this, this, this cycle that doesn't stop. Right. So with my process, we assess, we look at the benefit of your history. What have you done? What hasn't worked? And what are you looking for now? What is your intention now with this ketamine? And then we can also talk about set and setting at this point. 
Let's talk about set and setting. <laughs> I know what it is, but a lot of people out there are wondering what it is. So let's talk about it because it has a big impact. So before we dive into yeah. set and setting, I want to say that there's three uh, factors that impact your experience and your results and how effective ketamine is. One is the dosage. That's the reason we have developed therapeutic protocols yeah. um, where it's not only safe, but effective. Number two is the set. Yes. And number Which three is, is the mental. setting. And Correct. now you're going to talk about the set and the setting. So set and setting. Set has to do with your mental health state of mind. How are you coming into the treatment? What are your expectations? Um, what are you hoping for? And are you open and vulnerable to the process? And that's part of the treatment or my session that I end up doing with the clients before their treatment and then after their treatment. So with the six sessions at the ketamine that we do it, we're going to end up having 12 mental health sessions, a pre and post. And in that pre is where I help you set your mind. How open are you? How vulnerable are you going to be to this accepting of the experience? That's the set. Setting has to do with our environment, right? It has to do with your sound, the music, uh, your smells, kind of the physical environment that we are now in. Um, impacts a lot and influences the experience itself. Correct. That's the reason it's not the same. Somebody abusing ketamine or doing Correct. ketamine recreationally and expecting to get any mental health benefits and somebody that is doing it in a control setting right. where we basically block any external input, sensory input. The patients have, you know, headphones, mm -hmm. they have uh, eye covers, mm -hmm. and it, this makes the experience introspective. Go so inside. you're going inside yourself, you're discovering, um, you are going in through, through this journey, yeah. um, which everybody comes back from. <laughs> a ketamine experience not being the same, it's very a, tra a yeah. transformative experience. Um, and that's how we managed to do that and block any external sense and get the benefits of ketamine. Correct. What do we see for the most part? I mean, I, I, that would be one of the main questions. What is the experience itself? Uh, I can talk about how the patients go in. There's mm -hmm. usually the first session is a discovery session. Yes. Uh, patients are a little bit nervous because they don't know what to expect. Uh, for the most part, and most patients report a pleasant experience. Since it's an infusion where we've given it intravenously, it's a slow process, no? Yeah. It's a slow buildup. And then you get into having the experience mm -hmm. of, of, of the ketamine itself after 10 minutes, around 10 minutes. At that point, you might feel that you, your heart is racing or you have a little bit of tachycardia, what we call. Uh, and then you're going into this introspective where it's not only what you see, but what you feel. A lot of patients describe not seeing a lot of, you know, visual, visuals or colors, but it's what, this, it's what they're feeling and experiencing at that moment. Um, with these dosages, you don't disconnect completely mm -hmm. and we can stop it at any time. Yes. So if you're not liking the experience or if we see something, we can stop it at any time. Patients are on monitors. Basically, we're monitoring the blood pressure, the oxygen in the blood, and also the heart uh, uh, rhythm. Uh, and with that, we give you even more safety. Ketamine is, is very safe, but with this, we make sure that there's no issues at all. And then after that, they go on, they integrate the, this experience with you, right. which is what you're going to tell us about <laughs> what most people experience or, or, or say about this. You know, I like that you mentioned that the first session is a discovery session, because that's exactly what it is. A lot of our patients go in not sure what to expect. Yeah. And what I've noticed in the last few patients that we've done is when they have high expectations of what they're going to see, not so much feel, but what they're going to see, and they don't see anything, they get upset. Mm -hmm. They feel disappointed. disappointed they huh? get disappointed. And that's where my role comes in, where I help you set and manage your expectations because we do have to go into this open-minded vulnerable you can't have you have to surrender to the experience right. right so while we have intention right what we want to work on you do have to allow your mind to take you where it wants to take you uh -huh. maybe you want to work on a specific aspect of a trauma that you've been you know processing through but maybe your mind is taking you to a different stage that you need to pass first before we get to the trauma right so i help our patients understand that i help them create what the expectation is in sense of allow your mind to go allow them your brains and your thought to do what it's gonna do on its own, and then we'll talk after. Yeah. So usually after it's about a 40 minute conversation, and I do give everyone homework after the fact, right? What I call homework, which is mainly 
processing, doing the in-between work. What did you experience? What did you feel? What do you want to come up with later on? What's beautiful about ketamine is that they may not remember what they went through immediately. It comes hours later and days later. They have like these aha moments of, oh, wait, I did see something. Oh, I did feel that. Yeah which is beautiful when they're it's able to do that. beautiful and it's related to yeah. how ketamine works, which right. is creating new connections, Correct. synapses in the brain, something that, that we call neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. So it's the only medication that we know, besides psychedelic, right. the only legal medication at this point that creates new connections in the brain. Um, by doing this, obviously it improves, you know, uh, the memory, the amount of memories right. that you can uh, right. recall as well, your capacity to retain information. And, and, you, and, and it also has these mood enhancement properties uh, yes. because it works differently from other antidepressants. It works on glutamate, mm -hmm. uh, which is an important neurotransmitter that is not targeted by regular antidepressants. And we were seeing that, you know, based on the theory that you have a low levels of serotonin, you have low levels of norepinephrine right. or dopamine. So we were focusing on that as a cause of depression. And now we're seeing that glutamate has a big role hmm, in depression. Yeah. And that's the reason ketamine is so effective. Ketamine not only works on glutamate, but it works on these other receptors and neurotransmitters uh, that we're talking about. Uh, so it's a very interesting medication that works globally. It also targets two specific areas in the brain. One is the frontal cortex, mm -hmm. where you mm -hmm. have your cognitive function, where you create thoughts. Where and we you live, live right in exactly present you mind. in your mm -hmm. present mind and the other area is the limbic system which is focused with emotions mm -hmm. memory right subconscious so right. you're bringing those two areas together you no know? and it's something that is not what you do on a daily basis you no know? i don't know that we can on our own without this aid right it's, it's not possible. We right. we haven't you know been able to do that unless you're meditating and doing other right. states. Right. Right. Medi I think s meditation can get us there, but you have to understand that skill because right. that is a skill that you learn. You have to develop. It. You have to develop the med being able to meditate in that way that puts you in that altered state, just like ketamine does. Right. But ketamine gets you there immediately. Faster. And we're also seeing that a lot of patients report mood enhancement and decreasing depression suicidal ideation and all these anxiety and uh, overthinking within hours you know, after the infusion yes up to 24 hours now there's a reason why we have developed this protocol that is six sessions mm -hmm. one is because yes. it has been researched tremendously over the last 20 years that's why we do six sessions we see that with one infusion we're getting between seven to 14 days improvement okay. in the depression yeah. and the anxiety and, and, and other symptoms once we do a series of infusions that prolongs the effect right. for months right and we're able to maintain or sustain those benefits and also in the same time that they're doing cognitive behavioral therapy mm -hmm. we're changing the programming right of the brain let's explain because we haven't touched that what is cognitive behavioral therapy so cognitive behavioral therapy is an approach that works to shift your thoughts right when we are going through something, uh, depression, anxiety, whatever it may be, there's always something that triggered that episode. Something triggered you to feel sad. Something triggered you to feel anxious. So usually that's associated with thoughts. Thoughts produce behaviors, right? So if you have a negative, and I hate those words, negative and positive, rational and irrational thoughts are a little bit better to understand. When you're having irrational thoughts that guide how you look at your world, that guide how you behave your actions, and you start to realize that things are just not going your way or as you expected, it's probably the way you're thinking. So cognitive behavioral therapy allows you to start shifting your way of thought, right? Where it becomes more rational thinking, but also being in tuned with your subconscious and your conscious level, meaning your emotions and your logical part. If those two are not in tuned, you're not doing too well. You're either living in logic or you're only living by your emotions, right. which both can be dangerous. So kind of behavioral helps you with various techniques to start challenging these thoughts and reprogramming the way you talk to yourself, your own narrative. And, then, and then ketamine comes in that it brings down walls and it makes Correct. you more open to talk about these past right. traumas and all these right. things that is happening. So in conjunction, these two things together, right. that's the reason they're so powerful, right? Right. And how, you know, I always give my clients this analogy about train tracks, yeah. right? So when we're in this loop, 
of thought, just just irrational and just we're feeling up, we're we're not doing well. We're not doing too hot. You can think of a tra train tracks just going up and down. That's your thought, right? You can't you're not thinking anywhere else. You're just going up and down. And that's a negative train of thought. When you do psychedelics, now it allows you to create different tracks. Now you can go right, left, up, down, backwards, forward, always shapes or forms. Whereas before we with an antidepressant, we couldn't even do that. Right. This is what's making it so fascinating. So it's 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 a huge breakthrough. It's a huge breakthrough. Right, and it has been named one of the biggest breakthroughs, psychedelics in general, and ketamine. In mental health. In mental health. <laughs> yes. the, you know, uh, for the last, I don't know, 30, 40 years, right. since antidepressants were, were, were developed. Now, let's talk a little bit about the experiences of patients. What do they tell you usually? Like, how, how do they leave after finishing the product. I think it's important to, to, to address So that. it is. And, and expectations happen a lot, right? Because the, the first session, I think that they expect they're going to see so much visions, so many visuals, people, scenarios, situations, and that's not always the case. So we're having to work with them and help them understand how did you feel? What is it that you felt in that process? Sometimes they don't even have the language of, to explain how yeah. they feel. Yeah. So again, that's where I come in. But they're having a lot of existential experiences. I have a, one of our clients right now, uh, she felt, she explained to me the other day that she felt that she was being reborn. That she, she felt herself in a tunnel. While she couldn't see much, she felt it. That, that birth she, process. Yes, yes, that she was in a tunnel and it was about to happen, but it didn't happen yet. Yeah. So that tells me that this is her journey where she's going to eventually get to the point where she is reborn. And with the sense of thinking I'm reborn gives you the idea that I can try again. I have an extra opportunity. I have a new chance Which to so, see my world it's differently. It's so important, right? It I is. Mean, it's so important to know that we can always right. start over. And instills hope. Hope Completely. coming out of these experiences being hopeful mm -hmm. is a huge feeling yes. that I've noticed. And it's something that we see constantly. Yes. We see and usually... What, by the third or fourth session, they're having more positive experiences. Usually, usually. Yes. Yeah. We, we're not going to, you know, it, it is intense and yes. it can be intense. And that's that's how it should be a lot of times. Absolutely. You have to face these traumas and these past right. experiences. And for the most part, when you're coming in, this is what you're going to face. You're going to face right. it for the first two or three sessions. And then you start realizing that, okay, I can deal with this. Correct. You know, I can cope with it. I can work. You know, with work all the work yeah. through it, right? Yeah. And, and and you're changing that little by little, and you see them changing. It's incredible the transformation. Yeah. You know, it's beautiful. It's uh, inspiring, and yes. it's the reason we're doing this. Absolutely, completely. It's so gratifying to see how patients come, and then how they live, and how yeah. grateful they are, and the connections that we build right. with them. Right. right. You know, and the you know seeing them suffer for so long. You know, we've had and patients, losing hope and you know? losing hope, and we have patients that have been on antidepressants for twenty years, and They've just been surviving. They're not living. Right. And with ketamine, they recognize that. Like, I haven't been living my life. And that's beautiful to see. Yeah. It bring, it does oftentimes bring bring tears to mind. Of course. Of <laughs> course. It's super emotional. And we, again, like like I said, we create these connections with these patients yes. for life. You know? And the idea with ketamine is to give you freedom. It's not something that we continue. Uh, you know, there's a maintenance phase yeah. Yeah. after the after the protocol. But the idea is to give you freedom. And we achieve that with, with a lot of patients. I mean, they're able to continue with their lives, cope with the situations better, right. and not find themselves in, in the same positions that they were before. No. Um, I think, you know, we have covered pretty much uh -huh. everything that yeah. we wanted to cover. <laughs> um, I am sure that there will be a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please send them our ways and we'll be happy to uh, answer them. Again, we're very excited with, with the results that we're getting with ketamine. We're very happy to be helping patients Absolutely. find, you know, long lasting relief and also giving them hope. Yes. Um, so um, I think it's it's uh, it's something very gratifying and we'll continue to do it as long as we can. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we hope to see you soon. Bye.